As he faces only the third Senate impeachment trial in history, the president is desperately trying to soothe his ego and pretend he doesn't know the key players in the scandal. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. In the last week, the impeachment trial against President Trump has been rocked by a series of bombshell revelations from one of Trump's key henchmen in the Ukraine scandal, Lev Parnas. Remember him? The guy who looks like a pinata, but for crimes? <laughs> The guy who looks like a Soviet version of the sad face emoji. <laughs> a man who, no joke, had a company called Fraud Guarantee, and based on how things have gone, it turns out he is a man of his word. <laughs> the revelations began with new evidence released by the House that included Parnas' handwritten notes about Trump's scheme to force Ukraine to dig up dirt on Joe Biden. The notes made it incredibly obvious, in case there had been any doubt before, that Parnas was at the center of a corrupt plot designed exclusively for political and financial reasons and involving several of Trump's closest allies. The notes include incriminating phrases like, get Zelensky to announce that the Biden case will be investigated, do my magic and cut deal, get deal done in one to three months, and the ambiguous phrase, Ukraine ledger. The only way these notes could be any more suspicious is if the letters were cut out from magazines. <laughs> These notes look like clues James Bond would find in an underground lair right before he turns around and sees Christoph Waltz dangling Joe Biden above a shark tank. <laughs> ah, James, you're probably here to rescue your old chum. <laughs> and then, after all of those notes, there was one other note that referred to Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, the man at the center of this entire scheme, with just the word Rudy and two asterisks. These... <laughs> Guys are so dumb, they literally wrote down the names of their co-conspirators. This is like if Al Cowlings had put a sticker on the inside of his white Ford Bronco that said, OJ on board. <laughs> and yet, as incriminating as these notes would seem, Trump supporters have gone to extreme lengths to dismiss them. For example, Fox host Laura Ingram said they were meaningless. We got these what? notes of, like, scribble scrabble on a Ritz-Carlton Vienna notepad, and we're supposed to all think, oh, the Democrats have a smoking gun. First of all, you're accusing someone else of scribble scrabble. Donald Trump can't even sign his own name. If you didn't know that is the president's signature, if you looked at it for the first time, you'd be like, I guess that's a prescription for, I don't know, Percocet? <laughs> Second, these are notes on a Ritz Carlton Vienna notepad. The Ritz Carlton Vienna sounds like the setting for literally every spy movie ever made. They probably have tranquilizer darts in the minibar. Without looking it up, I can say for certain there's at least one Mission Impossible movie where Tom Cruise parachutes out of an airplane and crashes through the windows of the Ritz-Carlton Vienna. Except in this sequel, he crashed through the window in the first five minutes and find a note that said, here's our plan on how to stop us. The movie is over now. <laughs> and then, of course, there was Parnas' bombshell interview with Rachel Maddow, where he confirmed all sorts of sordid details, including the fact that Trump was willing to withhold all aid to Ukraine unless they specifically promised to dig up dirt on Biden. Yet still, Trump allies in the Senate have basically decided to pretend it didn't happen, like Martha McSally, who made a big show of attacking CNN reporter Manu Raju simply for asking if she thought the new evidence offered by Parna should be included in the trial. Senator McSally, should the Senate consider new evidence as part of the impeachment trial? Man, you're a liberal hack. I'm not talking to you. You're not going to comment? Senator, you're a liberal hack. She might as well have said, I'd like to speak to your manager. <laughs> this one moment shows just how deeply and fully the Republican Party has become the party of Donald Trump. All that reporter did was ask a simple, straightforward question, and she accused him of bias. I feel like this isn't the first time she's reacted like that either. You know what? You're a hack. Okay, ma'am, but you still have to pay for extra guac. <laughs> And then, of course, there's Trump himself, who denied ever knowing Parnas, despite the fact that Trump has had at least 10 separate interactions with him and has been in multiple photos with him. In fact, Trump brushed off. What is your response to Lev Parnas, who says that your efforts in Ukraine were all about 2020? You just wanted Joe Biden out. What's your response? Well, I don't know him. I don't know Parnas, other than I guess I had uh, pictures taken, which I do with thousands of people. He's so trying to probably make a deal for himself. Was doing Ukraine and you know I don't even know who this friend. man is, other than I guess he attended fundraisers, so I take a picture with him. Uh, I'm in a room. I take pictures with people. I take thousands and thousands of pictures with people all the time, thousands during the course of a year. Okay, it's true that you have photos with lots of people, but you also have photos with lots of criminals. You have photos of Michael Cohen, who's now in jail, and Paul Manafort, who's now in jail, and Kid Rock, who at the very least should be in fashion jail for... <laughs> those American flag pants. Trump is lying because he knows that is only the third president in history to face 
a Senate impeachment trial, his name and presidency will be stained in the history books forever, regardless of what happens, which is pretty remarkable given that just a few years ago, he was mostly known as the you're fired guy. I mean, this is like if the can you hear me now guy got arrested for burning down a Verizon store. You'd, you'd realize, oh, now I know why he switched to Sprint. No matter how hard Republicans try to rig the Senate trial to let Trump off easy, the mark of this historic moment will never go away, and that's something Trump is very obviously aware of, because last week, as the House voted to officially transmit the articles of impeachment they had passed in December to the Senate for a trial, Trump freaked out on Twitter. He asked, why should I have the stigma of impeachment attached to my name when I did nothing wrong? In all caps, he tweeted, quote, I just got impeached for making a perfect phone call. I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about the stigma of impeachment because you have so many other stigmas. I mean, sure, <laughs> you're only the third president to get impeached, but you're the first one to bail on an umbrella and just leave it outside an airplane. <laughs> and I'm gonna... Remember that more than the impeachment thing. <laughs> Second, nothing says perfect phone call like shouting at the top of your lungs. If you're someone who tweets in all caps, you're not making perfect phone calls. Besides, we all know the only perfect phone call is when someone calls you up to cancel dinner plans. <laughs> oh my God, we don't have to leave the house. <laughs> that was. That was perfect. <laughs> and apparently Trump's rage isn't confined to Twitter. CNN reported over the weekend that Trump has been shuffling around his chintzy resort in Palm Beach, grousing the club members about how unfair it is that he's facing an impeachment trial. A source close to the White House saying President uh, Trump has appeared distracted by the impeachment trial, telling people around him at Mar-a-Lago he can't understand why he was impeached. He is a bit distracted by the ongoing impeachment saga. He's apparently asking people around him why are they doing this to me? Donald Trump not knowing why he is impeached is in itself an impeachable offense. <laughs> why are they doing this to me? Well, here's a 300-page document laying it out. What? No, I don't want to read that. Why? <laughs> why won't they tell me? So, Senate Republicans are obviously intent on rigging the trial as much as they can, but no matter what they do, the trial itself is a significant historic judgment on its own, because in our current manic news environment, everyone's memories are fried and nothing ever really seems to stick. Remember when Trump tried to fire Robert Mueller or when his administration made up a fake terrorist incident called the Bowling Green Massacre, or when Trump literally shoved a fellow NATO leader out of the way so he could get to the front of the group? I mean, look at him. It's like he... Heard there was free food in the conference room. He <laughs> looks like he's at a wedding trying to catch the bouquet. Go away, Melissa! <laughs> You've already been married twice. <laughs> so knowing that this historic mark of shame will follow his name in the history books forever, Trump's been in desperate search of ways to soothe his ego. So desperate that at an event in the Oval Office last week that was meant to promote prayer in public schools, in front of him, on the Resolute desk, was a map that appeared to divide the country into a red-blue map based on the 2016 election results. Basically, they gave him that map the way parents give their kids a maze and crayons at a restaurant. They actually should give him a maze, but one where he learns something. <laughs> but the weirdest... The weirdest part of this charade was the fact that the map just sat there on the desk, unmentioned, for the entire event. Trump never talked about it. It was just there to entertain him and make him feel better. They might as well just have it printed onto a blanket so he can carry it around Linus style. <laughs> Not only was the map weirdly conspicuous for an event that had nothing to do with the election, apparently it wasn't even correct. While the map appeared to be very red and emotionally reassuring symbol of his popularity, Twitter sleuths quickly determined it wasn't entirely accurate. Some counties that went for Hillary Clinton were colored red. Trump's literally just changing the electoral map to make himself feel better now. Why not go all the way and include the rest of the world? Look, everyone, I also want Greenland, Turkey, and the Caspian Sea. Thank you, Caspia. Thank you, Caspian people. So Trump faked an electoral map to make himself feel better and then conspicuously laid it out on the famous Resolute desk, hoping people would notice it. That is insane. It's like 
you went over to Steven Seagal's house and he had a shelf full of Oscars, except they were just a bunch of Ken dolls painted gold. <laughs> I won this one for Submarine Justice 2 Operation Killer Seal. <laughs> it's where I delivered the famous line, Hiya! <laughs> Trump knows that ultimately, in the eyes of history, it won't matter whether Republicans successfully rig his impeachment trial to let him off the hook. No matter what, he will be only the third president in history to face such a trial, and it follows him forever, especially as more damning evidence emerges. A few years from now, when they're asked about where they stood on the presidency of Donald Trump, I have a feeling a lot of Republicans will say, I don't know him. This has been A Closer Look.